Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to really start getting into the back end a little bit. We're going to look at um, some examples and what this the, the code will look like whenever we are doing some back end stuff. So this is one of the most important videos from a conceptual standpoint when it comes to the back end. However, you're not actually expected to understand much of the code you're going to see because we haven't really talked about it. It's going to be in a different syntax. So instead, I'm just going to show you a simple back-end setup and then talk about it at a high level to kind of help you understand what it means conceptually, how the front-end and the back-end interact and work together. Don't try and take a bunch of notes on this. Don't try and read and understand the code. We're going to get there, I promise. But we're just trying to understand the concepts right now. So as an example, let's look at my site, mrbastine.com. And here's my website, and you can see I've got all this cool stuff, yada, yada, yada. Um, you can click on the blog if you want. It takes you to my blog, or you can click on the portfolio, which takes you to the portfolio. So up here, this is what's called a route. That's how we're going to start referring to this. This URL is a route. This is the root route because it is the www.websitewhatever.com or .org. That's the root. But then when I click on portfolio, you got slash portfolio, so slash something else. This is the root slash portfolio route. If there was another level, root slash portfolio slash project one, that would be another route. So the, that's that's how that works. It's just like the folders in your computer where you have kind of the, the top directory and then you have the directory inside of that, then you have directory inside of that, so on and so forth. Same concept. Not the same thing, but it's the same concept. So looking back at the root route, Let's, let's view the source. View the source. You'll see here, that's all there is to it for the source. Pretty small, pretty simple. This is the HTML that the server I have running is sending back. Whenever you make a request to mrbastine.com, this is the HTML that you will get back, that every single person will get back. This is a static page. This page does not change based on who is visiting it or if they're logged in or not or anything like that. This page will always return the same HTML every single time. Any person who sends a GET request to this website will receive the exact same HTML. The same thing is true with Portfolio. If I go to Portfolio, view my source, it's different. This is different HTML, but it's still going to be static. It'll still be the exact same HTML no matter who does it. But notice that it is different HTML. This seems obvious and kind of duh to some people, but the route that you visit determines the HTML you get back. This is one of the foundational concepts. You can change the HTML that you send, that your server sends, based on what route the user goes to. Even if the root route is the same, they can have different sub-routes to get different data back. And if I click on the meal app, you'll see here that we've got a couple different levels of routes. We have misresting.com, then we have the meal app, and then inside of that we have recipes. If I click on chicken, you'll see we have other routes down inside of there. Meal app, recipes, categories, chicken. And if I click on one of these chicken fettuccine alfredo, it looks even more different. You have meal app, recipes, and then you have this random string of characters. That's just the ID of this recipe inside the database. Don't worry about all that. We'll get there later. But just keep in mind that the route that you visit determines the HTML that you get. Okay? The route that you visit will determine whatever the server sends back. And you can set all this up on the server side. So now let's look at a server side, a local version of this website. You notice this is, on, this is on the web. So instead, we're going to load up the terminal. New version of iTerm is available. We'll do that later. If anybody gets this reference, I'm proud of you. You can join me in my nerdliness. So we're going to go to Desktop Programming Portfolio. This is just where I have it housed, and I'm going to start my server. So my server is running. I have some deprecation warnings because some MongoDB things are going to be deprecated later, but I'm not worried about that right now. My server is running on localhost port 3000. I go there. It's the exact same website. Same thing. Go to Portfolio. Go to Meal App. I can go to the exact same places. You'll notice it's localhost instead of mrbastine.com, but it's the exact same. So I just wanted to demonstrate that it's the same website. And now we can look at the code for this. So this is the app.js file. It is basically the, the main brain, the main thing, the main file 
of our web server. It's where you do all your configuration. It's where you set up stuff. And what it is doing, as part, part of what it's doing, is it is importing some routes. Let's find them. Here we go. It's importing different routes based on what part of the website. But the one we're interested in is the index routes. It's importing them from routes slash index. So over here on the side, routes index. Those, these are the routes that it is importing. So inside of this index, you'll see we have three routes. One, two, three. We have the root route. We have the slash portfolio route, and we have slash PD. Those are the three routes that are available. And whenever somebody visits the root route, it renders the index page. The index page is viewable right here. Let's go to index. And this is the HTML that is rendered anytime somebody visits the root route. Whenever someone goes to slash portfolio, it renders the portfolio. So let's find portfolio right there. And this is the page that is rendered whenever somebody goes to portfolio. And whenever somebody visits slash PD, it renders the PD page, which, oh, it looks like I need to update that. It should be PD slash index. So let's test and see if that works. There it goes. So visit that, you get different HTML back. The important part to get out of this, to make sure you understand out of this, is that on the server side, we, de we decide and we define what to do for each route. So whenever they go here, do this. Whenever they go here, do this. Whenever they go here, do this. All of these are static pages. You'll notice that no matter what, it's always going to send back the same stuff. The meal app routes are a lot more complex. So if we look at routes, go to the recipes one, these are a lot more complex because they're dynamic. For example, right here, whenever you go to the slash recipes, it's finding a recipe, or finding a bunch of recipes, and then rendering a page based on those recipes. It's rendering these, this page and passing in data from those recipes. And we'll get to all that. I just wanted you to understand that this is there's a difference between static and dynamic pages. Static pages are very simple, generally speaking, at least on the browser routing side. Dynamic pages are oftentimes a lot more complex and have more to them. So to recap, I'm serving both static and dynamic pages. Static pages here, and there's some dynamic pages over here. And it just depends on what route the user visits. The static pages will always send the same data, no matter what. The dynamic pages will send data based on the request, based on database information, based on an API information. It just sends different pages depending on the request and, and different variables. So we are using a text editor, Adam, to write the code. We're using the terminal right here to run the code. And this is, lets the server listen for requests. And we're using a browser to make requests and render the code. And this browser is simply talking to the terminal. That's that's what's happening right now. This browser, whenever I go to try and go to localhost, it's pinging this terminal and saying, hey, give me information, and the terminal is responding with information coming back to the browser. So my server is here, my browser is here, this is my user or my front end, and they're simply talking back and forth based on the logic I defined in these routes. So yes, I know this was a, this is kind of a, a lot of code to look at that you probably don't understand right now, so don't worry about that. What I want to make sure you get out of this video is the high-level understanding of the routing and the fact that depending on what routes we define, we send back different data. And the browser is where you go to those routes. The URL up here is wherever you go to those routes. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.